Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's take a look at a way that we can compute the precise area under a curve from one point to another in a couple different ways. For instance, what if we were, what if we were to take y equals sine t and we wanna go from zero to pi. Now we could take the our area function that we had that goes, takes area from a point and goes to, to something right here and simply plug pi in. For instance, if we take our area function, which we computed in a previous video, which can be notated like this, zero to x sine t dt, and we knew that this was, upon our computation, negative cosine x plus one, where we figured out what our specific plus c constant was. Then what we could do is we could plug in pi. And doing so, we end up getting negative cosine of pi, which is positive one plus one would be two. So we know that the area under the curve sine t from zero to pi, as t goes from zero to pi, is a very nice whole number of two. Now, let's think about this maybe another way. What if we were to compute the following? A of pi minus A of zero. We already know that A of zero is equal to zero. So why would we write this? Well, let's see why in a minute. We also know that A of pi minus A of zero is the change of, of the area function from this place to this place. And actually that should be the same change even if our function had started over here somewhere. So really, this change should be the same no matter which choice of area function I'm doing from which start. So it might not be zero, but anywhere, maybe this would still hold. It seems intuitively valid just looking at a picture, but let's actually do the computation and see. If we plug pi into our area function here, we end up getting negative cosine pi plus one. Then we subtract off our a function with zero plugged in, negative cosine of zero plus one. Notice that this one cancels with that one upon the distributing of this negative. And we're left with negative cosine pi plus cosine of zero, which is one plus one, which is two. But notice that this plus c didn't even matter. It canceled out. So really we could have picked any starting point and just plugged in and subtracted? The answer is yes. Likewise, we could have chosen any specific antiderivative at all and plugged pi in and zero in. We may as well just have chosen um, negative cosine of t even, and that would have been fine. For instance, let's look at this. What if, okay, so using the same definition here um, for, uh, so the same definition here, and we're going from zero and we're plugging in pi for x, so we can kind of notate it like this for our area function. So this is like a of pi, and that's sine t dt. So another way of computing this is simply to plug in, or else is to simply take an antiderivative, negative cosine t, and then what we do is we plug in zero into this and pi into this and take the difference. That's what this means. This means take the difference when you plug in this and this, where you take, you plug in this one and you plug in that one and you subtract in the following way. Negative cosine of pi minus negative cosine of zero. And then the result would end up ending up being two. So if you're wanting to plug in something specifically into an area function like this, you don't even need to calculate the plus C because it'll cancel in the computation here. If we think of A of pi minus A of zero, even if we chose our A function to not even start from zero, even if it started from somewhere else. So the idea is to simply just take any antiderivative at all and then plug in zero, and pi in this case, subtract, and we end up getting the result. Thanks.
Thanks for watching.